All righty, welcome to the Media Current Contrib Half Hour. It is our first meeting of August. Today we're going to take a look at the Masquerade module, something that I've done a little poking at recently. Um, and we'll take a look at a core bug that you might run into if you use the Masquerade module. So, my name is Damien McKinnon. I'm your host here. I've been involved in the Drupal community since 2007. Do a bunch of stuff, but people recognize me as that guy with the bunny ears who hops around the issue queues. My time is sponsored by Media Current. We're an open source product agency, and our commitment to open source goes beyond software. Next week, we'll loop back to looking at the upgrade path from Drupal 7 to 10. On the 17th, I figured uh, I wanted to take a look at the synonyms module, something that I think has a lot of potential to help uh, site owners keep uh, their taxonomy terms at bay, amongst other possibilities. Then on the 24th, go back to the upgrade again, and then on the 31st, kind of open the floor to look at whatever issues you might happen to run into or if you have any ideas on the topic you'd like to discuss if you have ideas for a topic to get into um or something that you'd like to give a presentation on yourself please drop an idea in our planning issue so muse this week there was one security update and you know, I wonder if I've got that number correct. Either which way. It was for the Matomo Analytics module for Drupal 7 and everything above. So if you happen to run that module, do update your site as soon as possible. There was one core update this week. It was a bug fix for 10.1. So we're up to 10.1.2. It also improves the compatibility with PHP 8.3 that I completely forgot had been released. But hey, cool. Um, and then there weren't any other updates. So we're at 10.0.10 .10 and 9.5.10 if you haven't upgraded to 10.1 yet. And Drupal 7 is still at 7.98. There are a couple of... Uh, Neat up um, core changes recently. One is that there's now a condition available for blocks to control whether they are displayed on a 200 response, meaning a, a regular successful response, or even a 403 or 404. So you can fine tune your blocks to say hide if they're not relevant for a 403 or 404 page or maybe you need to add some extra links say a link to the registration page or the user form on a 403 page or maybe you want to show a link of top search results on a 404 lots of interesting possibilities open up there's a, a minor detail with field types you can specify a weight in the definition uh, one odd well slightly odd change is that forms can now completely ignore the destination option that is passed in um, by default it's going to continue to adhere to the current destination value but for certain cases where you may not want to allow a redirect to another path I think that's going to be an interesting change. And in the interest of uh, reducing the amount of functionality built into Drupal core that people aren't using, they're now taking the step to make the tour module no longer enabled by default with the standard install profile. So if you're building a new site using the standard installation profile, it'll no longer have the tour module enabled by default nothing stopping you adding it yourself if you want to but um 
by default, it'll be, it won't be there. Um, the plan is to remove it in Drupal 11, but obviously that's a, a little bit of ways yet. And this is kind of the first step. For people who build custom entity types, uh, there is a new decimal data type. So if you need to store something with a, a, fi a decimal place, but that is uh, more specific than a floating point number. So for example, currency amounts, there's now a decimal data type in core. So um, once that becomes, or once 10.2 is kind of a, a more readily available thing, I suspect um, that uh, some modules like commerce may make that kind of a, a standard thing. But of course, commerce deals with support or supports any currency and uh, not every currency uses two decimal places. Um, some of them need to, or not even just two, but some of them need to be able to control the things on a kind of ad hoc basis. So we'll see how that works out. Anyway, as always, go to drupal.org slash list dash changes to keep track of what's going on in core. Drupal Camp Colorado is the 4th and 5th, which makes that tomorrow and Saturday. Decouple days coming up on the 16th and 17th. All ready to go, Marky? Yeah, we're. I'm actually going off to buy speaker gifts. And uh, if you want to come, come to Albuquerque and get your stuff together, come on out. It's going to be a good time. Awesome. Also, Drupal Camp Colorado, I'm doing a talk on single directory components um, on Saturday. And I believe they have hop in for that. So if you want to watch that, uh, feel free. Cool. Cool. Um, and then Drupal Camp Atlanta, Twin Cities, Drupal Camp, and Drupal Days Portugal all in September. Um, anybody have anything else they'd like to share? All right. Um, in that case, let's move on to the day's topic, which is the Masquerade module. So Masquerade module is one of those that has kind of floated around for a long time, uh, but hasn't really gotten the uh, kudos it deserves um, because it, it's a really useful module for sites that um, have a lot of emphasis on uh, people logged in with different permissions and having access to do different things. Uh, on a on one site I maintain, it's something that we use extensively. This particular site has is a, an e-commerce site, so you have customers logging in to manage or to create orders. Uh, check on their order status, etc. Then you have a huge fleet of staff with different permissions that have responsibility over different parts. So you've got some people who manage the um, orders. You've got some people who manage the product side of the content. Then you've other people who manage the more uh, PR static content um, and the masquerade module lets you quickly switch from whatever admin role you've logged into <clears throat> or admin account you're logged into into somebody else's user account and everything that they would normally see you see um, so it, it's extremely useful for uh, user support and especially when you're building a site to be able to go through and make sure that permissions are set up the way that you expect them to. So let's go take a look at it. 
And of course, it signed me out. Um, ah, do, 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 do. Excuse me a sec. I have to log in. Don't log me out every week. Um, I'm actually going to pause my screen share because come on one password okay and then all right finally back ah so where was i demo time so the module is enabled as just same as anything else. Um, from the modules page, dun dun dun, masquerade. And the idea is when it's installed with translations. There are a couple of permissions that are that it provides. So it gives you an extra option to control who can log in as somebody else with a specific role. So here you can see this is a bare bones site built with the um uh umami demo distribution that's provided by core and it has the administrator role that's always there the authenticated role which is kind of redundant because that means you're logged in so maybe you should open a book report too you know i'll do that later then there's an author role so there's a permission to log in or to masquerade as an author and the editor role, and again, the corresponding option to uh, allow you to log in as an editor. And what I'm going to do is, uh, well, there are also two other options. Masquerade is any user except the super user. So this is a little redundant in that Drupal is kind of trying to move away from the concept that user one is this super user that defies all permissions, but um, it is right now, there's still some parts of the site that depend on that or the system that depend on that. But uh, what we're gonna try doing is set it up that the editor can log in as an author but the author cannot log in as one of the other roles. They can log in as a regular authenticated user, say. So author can log in as an authenticated user, as can editor, but editor can also log in as an author. And we'll hit save there. Oh... Incorrect permission configure editable article node layout overrides. I must have been doing some monkeying somewhere. Um, oops. Let me try loading the main permissions page, see if I can fix this real quick. Um, I might have to dump the configuration, fix it, and re import. Uh, See what happens if I just save permissions as is. Adding non-existent permission to roles not allowed. Configure will add, eh. annoying. Uh, this so this is a local test bed. Let me see if one of my other test bed installs is working. City. I did not download this one. Git clone masquerade so 
let me see what branch name is it 8.x. .x. So 8.x dash 2.x um let's create ddev start i'll start up the 10.0 install instead of 10.1 this is what you get damien for not double checking your local install is working properly before you start the meeting um all right let's try d100 Hopefully this is working and not blown up too much. Okay, let's try enabling that module again. So it is masquerade, install, So incidentally, that error I was running into is a recent change. I think they changed this in Drupal 10. Prior to Drupal 10, when you save the permissions page, um, it didn't verify that each permission that was being saved actually existed in the system. Um, so somehow, for some reason or other, I've inadvertently probably added a patch to something and then removed it and i've broken my local install so let's go to the permissions page on the drupal 10.0 install we've got a content editor role and administrator role i'm going to add one more role and it is going to be let's say user admin and the user admin is going to have one extra permission let's go to edit permissions for this role they have access to administer users they can't do anything else but they can manage and they can see email addresses and view user information. Select method cancel can. Yes, they can fully control user accounts, but cannot modify the permission system. So back here, wait, no. Uh, if I go back to the permissions page um, and skip down to masquerade i'm going to say that the content editor can log in as a regular user but the user admin can log in as a regular user and also as a content editor uh, wait no user admin can log in as content editor the administrator account, anybody who has the administrator role can log in as anybody. Um, but let's scroll down and save the permissions. And hey, it worked this time. Yay. OK. Uh, so normally, oh, there's only one user account. Uh, the idea is that when you're on a user page, let me see where is it i'm logged in as myself there is no other nobody else so i need to create a user so then i can test things so um test well, let's make this one a an editor at example.com username editor no the editor password something really secure and give them the editor content edit role scroll down and hit create new account hopefully that's saved and these errors didn't throw it off okay good create new user account for the editor no email has been sent all right let's do another one uh for user admin so let's call it email address user admin at example 
Facebook.com, username, user admin, ha, the user admin, super secret safe password. They've got the user admin password or role, scroll down and hit create new account. So if I go to the people admin page, I see we've got three accounts. One is the user admin, then the editor, and then my super user. One thing you'll notice is on this operations dropdown, there's now an option that says masquerade as. So when you're logged in as an admin and you've got the permission to masquerade as another user, on this page, it's going to have an option that says masquerade as that person, which is very handy. So you can do it right there and then. So I'm going to try looking at site through the eyes of the editor. So I have switched. I'm now, and it gives you a message when you do that. It says you are now masquerading as the editor. <clears throat> and you'll also notice in the toolbar at the very top, it has a link that says unmasquerade, which is very handy indeed. So I can now go through and because I'm logged in as a content editor, I've got access to create content, edit, etc. This is going to be a error. I've got tons of errors. Um, that's weird. All right. So test content. Some stuff here. Yada yada. I'm going to hit save. I can create content. Um, all right. So I'm seeing the site. I initially was logged in as the admin, and then I was able to masquerade as the user, the editor user. So now if this person said, hey, I'm having problems with my account, when I go to the form, I see this giant uh, red error message. Is this something that I need to be concerned about? It happens every time I load the create article page. What's going on? The site's broken. Fix it. So you can then log in as that person and see the site exactly like they would if they were logged in. You don't have to share a password. All of that silliness is gone. Um, you just use the mask grade system. And then when you're done, when you've worked out what the problem is and you go, oh, it's this thing with my PHP install, let's fix it. You fix it and then double check, the error is gone. And then you unmask raid and you're back to your super admin account. Um, so then um, if you are, wait, in order to, test this i need to give one extra permission to the user admin um let me see you site let's set it so the user admin can use the admin theme um can use the toolbar Do, 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 do. Access site can uh, minister. Where is it? Use the admin pages and help. All right. That's the one. That was the permission I wanted because I want the person to be able to see. I go to the users page. I want to log in as the user admin and then be able to see what they see. So I've logged out. Now I'm going to log in again as the user admin on my super secret password that totally isn't just the word test. Hit log in. And now I'm logged in as the user admin with the full regular login, not masquerading. So let's see what happens on the people admin page. And the cat wanted out right then. So as you can see here on the people admin page, I've got access to this page. 
I can see the three user accounts on the site. Uh, there's the admin. I do not have the drop down to masquerade as that person, but, and obviously I don't have the option to masquerade as myself because I'm logged in as myself and be kind of redundant. But I do have the option to masquerade as the editor. So this can be useful where you have, say, a user admin role that you want to allow um, somebody to be able to um, manage the user accounts, or maybe you have a, uh, you've got, like we have in our case, a an e-commerce site with lots of traffic, lots of customers, and people will occasionally say, I should be able to order this item, but it's not letting me. You can masquerade, you can give your uh, store admins access to uh, the permission to log in as a, an, a regular user and then um, they can if, if somebody contacts to say I can't order this or there's a problem with my order they can ask grade as that person and see everything that they would normally see that person would normally see so they can go to their profile page they can see uh, like with commerce you get a page that lists the orders etc and uh like i said we use this extensively on this one site um but one thing that i'm going to log back in as the admin um there is a block let me see where is it which block is it Yes, this shows the problem. One of the things, uh, let me go back to the people page real quick, masquerade as user. As I mentioned, when you're masquerading, it has this extra link in the toolbar that says unmasquerade. If, for example, uh, you're using this in a support scenario where the people that you're masquerading as don't have access to the toolbar, it adds an extra link to the user menu, which is what you should see here in the new Olivera uh, default theme in Drupal 10. Uh, so you can, you've got out of the box two different links to let you unmasquerade. The problem is there's a bug in Drupal core that causes that link to show up when you're logged in as user one. And uh, let me see, where was it? Um, so there was this existing bug on the masquerade module where it had been reported that unmasquerade link shows in the menu when you're not masquerading, which is exactly what happens here. That I'm logged in as user one. So at a permissions level, I have access to see everything. But at a technical level, this unmasquerade link is not technically relevant to me right now. So it shouldn't be showing. And after much uh, work, I was working on some test coverage to... Um, Make sure that the unmasquerade link doesn't show when you're looking at the page as user one. But the test was failing. And somebody pointed out that this is actually a core bug. And so there's this core bug from 2015. So it's been around a long time where uh, it the system does not properly... Uh, separate the route access from the ability to see a link. So as an admin, say not even looking at user one, as an admin who is managing the menu items, you should be able to see that the link exists, 
without necessarily having access to the page the link goes to. And uh, that core bug, uh, once you apply that core, the, the patch to core for that bug, the unmasquerade link go properly shows up when it's supposed to and doesn't show when it's not supposed to. So uh, hopefully we'll get to tidy up this patch. Um, what's left at this point is just to fix the tests. Uh, there is some test coverage for it included, but there are some uh, regressions that need to be looked at. So uh, let's leave it there for today. Uh, I hope this has been useful to you to uh, take a look at this module that has been around for a long time, but I think not enough people use it or know it's there and take advantage of it. So that's it for this week. Thank you for joining us. And we'll be back again next week. Have a fantastic week. Thank you. Have a great week, Damon. Thanks.